morning, friends, and welcome to Rolling with Ruel. My name is Ruel Gaviola, and this is Friday Fun Day. I don't know what's going on with the camera here. It's like so unfocused. Um, anyways, we'll just, we'll just have to deal with it. I'll, I'll just be blurry this morning. I uh, hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, it's 9 a.m. Pacific here in, on the West Coast, California, California, A, um, home of the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and world champion Los Angeles Dodgers. Still, I'm, I'm going to be saying that for the rest of the year, I think, folks. So I um, want to say hi to the early chatters here. I see Melanie, Patrick, uh, Amanda, thank you. And um, also, I think there's some people on uh, YouTube joining us as well. I don't have those uh, that opened up here yet, so I can't see it. I don't know why this camera is so unfortunate focus today it was fine last night so if, if y'all uh were um if y'all joined me last night over on my twitch channel uh michelle and i uh, did a puzzle and that was a really fun thing and i actually have it still sitting here um i was i i just couldn't i i couldn't put it away yet so it's gonna sit here for at least another day um i mean it's only 300 pieces but still it's a puzzle you know you, you like to have it laid out for a little while and um you know to enjoy your work right um you know, maybe it's this light. I don't know. Uh, anyways, I hope you're doing uh, well. What I do here on Friday Fun Days is I will open up some board games that I've uh, received recently, talk about them, um, show them off to y'all, and uh, we could also talk about board games. So why don't I do this? I'm going to change this banner here. So uh, Friday Fun Day is now live. So talking about unboxing and or talking about and unboxing games. What are you playing this weekend? Put them in the comments below. We'll get to, uh, to them as um we can as soon as we can. Um, I want to say that our, I want to share that our stream is brought to you by uh, our friend, good friend and sponsor, um, Holly Chu, Holly Chu Illustration. She does all the artwork uh, for my Twitch channel, also here on Facebook. Uh, Holly Chu is, I don't have the, uh, do I have it here? Where is her? Her website, folks, is at hollychuart.com. Please visit that's C-H-I-U art.com, Holly Chu. Thank you, Holly, as always, for your support. Uh, let me see. There it is. Okay. Um, so anyways, got some great games today, as always. I'm looking forward to these. Um, a couple of them I'll be playing real soon, um, but we'll get to those one at a time. Uh, Melanie yes, says, you woohoo Lakers. Yes, Melanie, you are a very smart person. I uh, need to switch to YouTube. I don't chat board games with my real name. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, no worries. Monique is in the house. Hello. Jesse Quackalo, thank you for joining us, my friend. I don't know. You know, my the quality on my streams nowhere near as uh, good as yours, my friend. But, you know, we, we go with it. You know, we can chat. I'll just be a little blurry. It, it is Friday morning. Hopefully, y'all have had your coffee. Uh, maybe it's Friday afternoon or Friday evening, wherever you are. But I've got my Earl Grey. Um, hot tea with honey and lemon, as always. Oh, that really hits the spot. That really helps with the old voice. Um, anyways, what are y'all playing? Uh, let me know what's happening um, with you. Um, Patrick's going to play Villainous Chai Sagrada. Oh, okay, cool. And he played Calico last night. Way more thinky than I thought. Okay, that's good to know. Um, Patrick is a... Hey, Monique. Uh, Patrick is a local gaming buddy of mine, and he's he also just started streaming recently on his uh, Twitch channel and on Facebook. So it's good to... I, I haven't... I opened Cal Calico and have not played it yet. I know Michelle and I would really dig it. Um, so maybe this weekend we'll play. Um, yes, Jesse, please. Let, we, we have talked about this before. Let, let's collaborate, man. Um, you know, well, we'll just uh, message each other on Facebook. We'll, we'll figure something out, man. Um, Jesse uh, Quacklow, he recently started a podcast as well. I mean, in addition to the amazing stuff he does on YouTube. I mean, check it out, Quackalow. Um, There's a Facebook group that just opened up as well. Um, Aaron's in the house. Aaron. Aaron. I was going to say Aaron, right? Like you haven't heard that enough since Keen Pill. But Aaron Bradley also is um, a Twitch streamer, podcaster over on uh, Game Enthuse. Uh, so they do excellent work as well talking about not just board games but all kinds of geeky stuff which i love i i, I learn a lot just listening to y'all so thank you aaron for joining us um patrick really like calico despite the cats yeah i i mean i like cats i'm more of a dog person but i mean the art is beautiful and that that game seems really cool uh melanie says that sounds very good uh oh second chance rolling right yeah that's i like that one second chance it's really uh it's simple as far as the rules and stuff but 
I, I just I enjoyed it solo as well. It, it's just a, it's just a good um, solo game. Um, flip and fill, right? It's very it's got that Tetrisy feel to it. Where, you know, you're just flipping over Tetris pieces, cards, and then filling them in. Really simple, maybe like a 15, 20 minute game, but it's not it's not too heavy. But I don't think it's got enough um, decisions. Like you have to make a decision every turn what piece you're going to put down. And there's sometimes like they don't fit, so that's when you get your second chance. And if you can't do it, then I think the game's over or whatever. But um, you know, you try to fill in as much sheet as much of the sheet as you can, and then I think you what is it? You score like the number of um, empty spaces you have or something like that. It's been a while for a while um, since I played it, but I, I would like to. Um, oh, cool, awesome, yeah, uh, Jesse. Yes, thank you for the PM, my friend. Um, Patrick's also could probably be glued by Switch while um, playing. Oh, did you end up getting Cobra Kai? Awesome, man. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So I'm going to turn on this camera over here. Um, I got to show you the. So last night, Michelle and I, um, we did a puzzle. And I started it. Um, but, you know, she was watching in the other, she was working in the other office here at the house. And then she ended up just coming over here and helping me finish it, which is great. Because I think I chatted and, like, did the puzzle for, like, an hour. And then Michelle just came in and, you know, we hung out with chat. It was really cool. And we ended up finishing it um, last night. It was, like, a three-hour stream. It was I, did, I did not expect to go that long. But it honestly, the time just flew by. It was like, hey, you know, next thing. So let me see. I don't know if y'all can see that. So this is. The puzzle there. There's the person lying on the beach. There's some people in the water, and you know, just it reminded us of better times, right? Um, but we talked about and we talked about all kinds of stuff last night. It was fun. It was just like you know, chilling with our friends and um, on, on stream, and um, yeah, really relaxing. So I'm leaving this here. We're gonna. It's gonna be on the 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 game table for at least another. Uh, hour or so. Oh, born and raised in Hawaii. Nice. Awesome. Um, what am I going to open up first? You know what? I'm going to open up. Let's look at this game here. This is, I talked about this last night on the stream, but I want to bring it up again. Prosperity. Uh, this is a game of artisanal tea blending. It's now on Kickstarter and they've, they're about uh, halfway funded and they've got, I think a few more days left. So it's going to be a tight, tight squeeze. Um, Al Gonzalez is a Southern California designer, game designer, artist, and so forth. Uh, so he did everything here, and he's he he had funded another game of his, I think, a year or two ago. Amanda may have uh, more knowledge about this, but uh, this is, I believe, his second game that he's um, trying to fund. Uh, they're about halfway there. They, it's he said he had posted an update last night where the numbers are tracking in a way that um, they should be funded in the next couple of days. I mean, he's. I, I feel like it's it's going to be it's going to be a close call. But anyways, let's take a look at it. Um, I really want I, I wanted to, he sent this over and I'm I've been trying to get it to play it'll play, but it plays at three or more. Um, so you know, mine, Michelle's, and Lauren's schedule have not lined up properly uh, all this month. Uh, we have had I think once or twice when we've been able to get together and we've already had other things going on. But hopefully tomorrow we will be able to play this. Um, this is game. I mean, this this falls right in our wheelhouse, right? Game of artisanal tea blending. Uh, we played Chai earlier this year, which I loved. I think Chai, as far as gateway games are concerned, one I would I would rank that very highly. Um, just the components alone, you put Chai. It's got table presence presence for days. Just the little, all the little bits and pieces for Chai. You got the little teacups. You're making teas. It's a beautiful game. Um, and prosperity is along those same lines as far as um, subject matter, right? You're making teas, but uh, this does it in a different way. This is, um, we'll, we'll take a closer look in just a second. Amanda says uh, something with cats, my brain. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It was some kind of cat game that he he did. Uh, James, yeah, thank you uh, for joining us. Yeah, we, we've, put, thanks to Michelle, we finished the puzzle last night. Uh, so prosperity. Three to six players, 20 to 45 minutes, 12 and up. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I really dig the art in this, right? This is, uh, oh, I've got my, my blinds rope in here. I've got, got some funky shadows. Uh, anyways, yeah, in Prosperity, you're a proprietor of a small artisanal, artisanal tea shop. And um, 
your trying to you know source ingredients, blend them into wide variety of teas to satisfy the demand of the locals. Okay, and then you get help. Um, you're gonna set it up. It's you know a couple of tableaus. You have your uh, ingredients here, and um, uh, yeah, okay, ingredients, and then what are, what are these here? Uh, two rows. Okay, you have premium orders, and then you have favor tokens. Okay, the favor tokens. Um, so yeah, you're gonna set up your tea shop. It's basically, you know, you build your tableau in front of you and with the ingredients, you have order cards. On your turn, you're going to choose, uh, consists of two phases, sourcing and fulfillment. So, so sourcing is of course, uh, taking cards from one of the four ingredient decks. Um, and I guess it, it depends which ones you get, how many you get. Advertising, you may pass on sourcing ingredients to opt for advertising. If you do, you do take two from the bank, then discard any one order card from the market. So two is there are these? What is this? Two um, sources or two favorite tokens? Okay, maybe that's favorite tokens. Uh, then fulfillment, uh, you may fill any amount of orders from the marketplace as long as you have the ingredients to fill them. So solo. Uh, now I, I got confused. I thought this was a solo game, but no, it means claim an order for the market and discard all of the required ingredients from your hand. So this is if you do it by yourself. Uh, if the, you have a co-op, if you do not wish to use all of your own ingredients, you may ask other players for specific ingredients to help fill an order. Okay, so that's interesting. That's sort of like a semi-cooperative element to the game. Favor tokens you could also use to help fulfill orders, it looks like. Use on any single ingredient on a future order. And then sell. You may discard the order immediately to take the money value printed on the left. Uh, then you have an evergreen. Oh, at the end of the game, player with the most prestige is the winner. Okay, cool. Yeah, so a really simple uh, rule set here, folks. Uh, there's tiebreakers, final scores, uh, most prestige uh, you get for favor tokens, money, and then the amount on the order cards. So it seems like a pretty uh, straightforward uh, card game. Here are the player aids. Again, this is a prototype, so it's definitely going to look, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to look different and quality-wise, right? Um, here is all you need to know. I, again, I'm a huge fan of quick reference guys, player aids. I, I wish all games would have something like this, but uh, here's everything you need to know about uh, step one and two, the different ways to solo and co-op uh, fulfillment, and then evergreen orders during fulfillment. Only, you may only fulfill one evergreen or order per turn. This does not count as, oh, okay, so it's like an additional order you can fill. And this looks like it's a set collection, right? Any identicals, any blah, blah, blah. Then all the different icon references. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is um, a prototype, so there are going to there's going to be definitely some differences in quality. I think on the uh, Kickstarter there was a metal a metal coin option as well. So here's all the chips. Yeah, they, these are just cardboard printed on cardboard here. So money, favorite tokens, and so forth. Uh, quick look at it, and I think Al also recently released all the art as well. He just said, "Hey, check out here's all the art that's going to be in the game." Um, so you're gonna have, I believe, a first player token looks like a teapot. Tea kettle cards. Let's look at the cards here. Um, you know, I don't know if it says here. Did he do all? I'm almost positive Al did all the art as well. Uh, game development by I went to designs. Oh, art by Jose. Oh yeah, he did. He uh, he he was definitely involved in uh, the art. Okay. Um, oh, Aaron, yeah, the encourage me is not brave enough to learn games live on the flight. Yeah, you know, I I just roll with it, my friend. I you know, you could totally do it. Um, oh, Daniel, thank you. Peyton heard you talking from the other room, ran to say hi. Hi, Peyton. Hope uh, you and Jared are well and your parents are doing well. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, Daniel from Kids Planning. They I was honored to be a guest on the Kids Talk podcast a couple of weeks ago. They're they're great. I mean. You know, we, we talk about the next generation all the time. I mean, this next generation of content creators are going to be amazing. I mean, the work that they're putting out now as like eight and 10 year olds with the help of their parents, I wish I was that good. You know, they, the, the, they're just awesome, Jared and Peyton. Um, we had a lot of fun talking games and uh, they asked me some of the fun, funnest questions I've ever had to ask during a, during an interview. Uh, so here's, I mean, the, the art is beautiful, right? Floral, grain. Spice, where is that one? I know Michelle, we, we looked at this last night. Citrus, where's her favorite? Grain for chamomile. Uh, oh, there's Michelle's, rooibos, rooibos, which I could never say. Uh, peppermint, 
and so forth. So yeah, you know, you see the symbols here. Again, please keep in mind this is still a prototype, still a work in progress, but I mean, the art looks fantastic. Oh, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, folks, uh, uh, there's a, a link. Uh, Daniel uh, dropped a link in the, the chat if y'all want to check out the interview that I did with uh, Jared and Peyton. Just nice kids, great parents. I mean, talk about, you know, doing parenting right. I mean, you and your family are creating board game videos. Love it. Uh, here are the order cards, folks. So we have like an English breakfast, the Prosperity, right, named after the game, chai, and so forth. You know, here's the ingredients, points, favorite tokens that you can receive, and so forth. And I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just assuming all this art is uh, in flux right now. Hey, catnip chai. Sir Phoenix's catnip chai. Cam William McGregor's chamomile dream. Patrick's, um, oh, it hasn't tried Roy Voice yet, but chamomile honey vanilla is delicious. Okay. <laughs> Did they knock over your tower though? Yeah. Uh, Daniel, so Patrick and his son uh, started streaming yesterday. They were playing Beasts of Balance and, you know, Patrick's doing it. I don't know if you know the game, but it's like this hybrid tabletop digital game. So you put pieces down and then the app shows it and you're building like animals on, uh, animals on modern animals basically. And Patrick's son kept just want to knock it over so he could see the, the volcano explode. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, okay, folks, so that is Prosperity. Just a quick look at this prototype. It's on Kickstarter now, please. This, this is a local designer here in SoCal. Um, I've had the f good fortune of uh, gaming with Al. Super nice guy. He actually, um, Michelle doesn't remember this, but we played, um, I think it was Camel Up with him, M Amanda, uh, Jackie from Show Me How to Win, and uh, at Game House. And Al, like one of the best teachers of games. I mean, you could tell, like, I mean, he just taught Camel Up perfectly. And it might have been another game as well. But we had a really good time, and this is his game, Prosperity. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move this here. So I've removed some of the plastic already some, from some of these, because I don't want to stab myself on uh, live um, Facebook here. Um, this is the next one here, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. This one came out, I believe, was it last year or earlier this year? Um, I am a big fan of the Tiny Epic series. Have always been, full disclosure, they recently um, sponsored us. Uh, they will be um, sponsoring us for Solo Saturdays, where I'm going to play this tomorrow, a solo game. Um, but, I mean, long before they became sponsors, I, you know, anyone that knows me knows I rave about the Tiny Epic series. These games are, I mean, they're little, right? I mean, this is, um, let me show you, just for scale. Um, okay, here. Like, here's Jaws, right? Standard, pretty standard size box. Um uh, actually, no, it's smaller than a ticket, to, way smaller than a ticket to ride box. But anyways, you can find this on the shelves at Target. This is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, right? The Tiny Epic series is always, always surprised me how much game they pack in a, a small package like this. And, um, you know, they're, I mean, they're fully realized games. It's They don't cut quarters anywhere. I mean, it's really amazing how much they pack into each of these games. So this is Gambling Games, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. My favorite in the series has been Tiny Epic Galaxies. I know there's some fans of Tiny Epic Galaxies in the chat. Shout it out in the chat, folks, if you're a fan of Tiny Epic Galaxies or Tiny Epic series. Um, I also like Quest. Um, and let's see, uh, came out several months ago. Thank you, Melanie, delivered this. I need to play mine solo, so I'll have to. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, join me uh, tomorrow, Melanie, over on my Twitch channel, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. Same time now, we do solo Saturdays. And this one will be sponsored by Gamelin, and I'll be playing Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, which means I've got to learn it tonight, folks. <laughs> okay, so Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. Um, it is a worker placement game. Uh, in Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, you are dino ranchers running large-scale operations on a remote tropical island. Pretty Sounds pretty familiar, right, folks? Uh, dinosaurs are bred and sold to the highest bidders for use in popular high-thrill theme parks, but ranching these beasts is hard and dangerous work. Do you have what it takes to out-ranch your opponents and operate the most successful dinosaur ranch? Yeah. Uh, Patrick says, didn't know that was out. Back Tiny Epic Pirates. Western is my favorite. Yeah, I like Tiny Epic Western too. It's got that whole like poker thing to it. Um, I'll admit, I, it's, that's probably my third favorite. I've got Tiny Epic Galaxies and Tiny Epic Quest. And I used to go back and forth with them, but I mean, I'm a sci-fi guy, so I love Tiny Epic Galaxies. And I just, I love the fact that you, you roll a lot of dice in that one. 
Uh, Patrick says Quest is his fa uh, second favorite. Nice. So here's Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, folks. Uh, Melanie says, oh, okay, yeah, came out this summer. Rule book, um, Rules of the Ranch, right? I mean, this right here, all these cards and all these dinosaurs. It's like a ton of dinosaurs in here, and you have your ranchers and stuff. Uh, first round marker, die, plant markers. Again, tiny epic. The game never ceases to amaze me how much they can put in this small box, and I love it because it's, you know, these are fully realized games at a price point that's like super affordable, right? I mean, if you do have the extra money laying around, the, you know, um, board games are a luxury item, right? But I think they have really good games that are make it that are affordable for those of us that are on a budget. Um, Patrick says dinosaurs complete went on my radar. Got to pick, yeah, right. I, I don't know why it went under my radar too. I, I maybe it just I don't know if it was just maybe I was just burned out on the dinosaur theme. But now that I've opened it up, like I did take a sneak peek last night. Like I'm I'm excited to get this to the table. Um, so game overview, collect resources, assign ranchers. Yeah, worker placement, folks. Retrieve ranchers, arrange ranch. Uh, feed dinosaurs, breed dinosaurs, refresh. Um, so here's all the rules here. Just flip right through it. Yeah, it's a worker placement game, which which is probably my favorite genre game. I, I love worker placement. Here's the solo rules. Uh, I, I've always enjoyed uh, Scott's uh, Scott Alms' um, solo uh, rules. They're pretty... I mean, they're always easy to implement. Um, you do have to do a little management of an AI, but I don't think it's anything. I mean, you're just drawing cards and blocking spaces, I believe. But for his other solo games, I, I mean, I, I always solo um, Galaxies. I, I solo uh, Quest a bunch. I think I might have soloed Quest on, on stream recently as well. Uh, FAQ, Dinosaur. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, so Melanie asks, has anyone played the Ultra Tiny Epic D Galaxy? Not sure. Yeah, um, has it, I have not played that one, and that's the one that's basically like a, it fits in like a small deck of cards, I think. They also, didn't they do Tiny Epic, was it Kingdoms for like the Ultra Tiny Epic? I, I forget, but I'm going to save these for last. We'll look at those last, folks. Um, here are the cards. They are those uh, like Ticket to Ride size cards. Uh, you have your rival ranchers, right? Um, so that's they're gonna like block space. I, I'm assuming this is for um, the solo part. Uh, here are all the cards. So, wow! Again, for a little game like this, look at this art. It's, it's fantastic. You got a ton of little. Oh, there's the T Rex. Everyone's favorite, the T Rex. If y'all can see that. Amanda also loves worker placement. Yeah, big fan. Uh, Patrick, I've played Ultra Tiny Epic Kingdoms. There is such a thing as too small. <laughs> Dimetatron. Hey, there it is. Is it Dimetatron? Y'all know the name? Of it? I, I know that's a, a song by um, the Double Clicks. They do a song about this dinosaur. Uh, and Patrick, I actually kind of wish they'd drop the tiny all together. You know what? I think... I'd like, I would love to see like galaxies and quests get like full on, like just regular sized board game version. I think it'd be great. And so, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, that is like they went from the total tiny to the total epic, right? And that one is just humongous. Um, I don't know if we played that one together, Patrick. I, we might have. I, I for, oh, actually, I think you won that game. There's Mrs. Gaviola. Good morning. She must be on her break, her coffee break right now. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to see their games just get a regular treatment because they're they're great games. Scott Alms is a good design, uh, excellent designer. So here's some contracts and stuff. It looks like you're fulfilling, um, you know, different uh, dinosaur dinosaurs, right? Uh, then your oh, private contracts, right? There you go. Uh, Patrick, yeah, we did play a four card. That's right. There you go. Thanks, Jose. Hugely epic galaxies. That, I'm, I'm all in for that. Here's uh, one of the dice, or die. It's one the one die in the game. Uh, then we have, what is this? Laboratory. Oh, is this an expansion? You know what? This is the uh, deluxe version, so I believe this is an expansion that they include. They do that a lot with their uh, deluxe stuff. They'll give you, like, an expansion as well. So here are, oops, cards. Uh, yep, 
it is a mini expansion, the laboratory. Okay. So you get uh, four laboratory mats, microscopes, beaker tokens, which are all here. Those are beakers. Oh, there's a dinosaur as well. Cool. Yeah, they're components. I mean, again, they're small, but oh, it's, they're always good. Okay. Mini expansions. You got a, uh, the Gamilodon Fossil Museum Aerial Sur Surveyor. There is the laboratory. Cool. Kickstarters for these always have a few mini expansions. Yeah, so this is the, so this is the uh, Kickstarter version. Um, again, kudos and thank you to um, Gamelin for sending this over. Let's look at the game uh, board. So, okay, so one to three players, one to two players. Okay. Aaron's in the house. Hey, Aaron. We have the second Aaron for today. This is family, though. Hey, Aaron. How are you? Hope everything's going well. Um, private contracts, public. So we're doing those. And then here are, oh, ranchers, different player boards, right? Keeping track of resources, stuff. Oh, this is, okay, so I'm pretty sure this is like the solo as well. So you pick one, and then you'll pick another player mat and flip it over to the solo side. They are the poachers. Aha. Okay. And then this is going to be uh, your board that you set up. And that's a, always a cool thing that um, they do in Tiny Epic series. You know, they have these pretty standard size, like almost like postcard size uh, pieces, and then you just connect them together to form your board. Uh, discard pile research and... Uh, okay, medical leave, you have your phases here, so you know what to do, and then the round tracker as well. So I've saved the best for last. Here's a little inside the tray. Of course, the best for last, all the dinos. These are tiny. They're epic. They are dinosaurs. You get, like, I don't know how many. So here's the the people, uh, the meeples. So they're the characters. So I'll just throw those there. But here are the dinosaurs. Okay. Looks like, okay, there's a resource there as well. Looks like resources. I don't know what that is. Looks like a leaf. So it's probably food. But yeah, all your little dinosaurs, folks. I mean, I'm just gonna go. We'll do. We'll do a uh, dice tower style drop. There you go. All the dinos and oh, there's <laughs> the first player tracker is a coffee mug. Y'all can see that. It says. Uh, I love dinos. Oh, Aaron, uh, busy since they furlough pile. Well, hope you're hanging in there. We're just talking and unboxing games today, folks. Um, oh, maybe this is the first player token. I don't know what the other thing was. Uh, but yeah, all the dinosaurs, folks, like lots and lots of dinosaurs. Really cool. I mean, they are tiny, but you know, let me see. Can you uh, can that focus in there? Uh, this is totally out of focus now. I don't know what's going on here. What if I do this and do this? There you go. Yeah, as you can see, tons of little meeples, tons of little dino meeples. Um, they are small, not, but that's really cool that you get so many. Okay, so that is uh, Tiny Epic Dinos. Uh, we'll be soloing. I will be soloing, soloing that tomorrow. So join me at 9 a.m. Pacific on my Twitch channel tomorrow. Um, yeah, Patrick, I always thought that slow mo component drop was cool too. Speaking of gambling games, why don't we look at this tiny epic Galaxies Blast Off? So this is. Um, I was just talking about my favorite game, tiny, uh, my favorite tiny epic game, Tiny Epic Galaxies. This is the new one, Blast Off. This went straight to retail. This is the one that their um, game was pushing for, you know, for retail outlets. This is basically a more gateway style uh, Tiny Epic Galaxies. And I looked over the rules last night. It's the same game, but they took out a little, just streamlined stuff, took out a few things, um, such as like the secret missions. Um, so this one is going to be in retail outlets. And I, this will probably be the way that people like non-gamers would or casual gamers would get into uh, the Tiny Epic series is with Blast Off. So I'll do a quick open here. Uh, if you're familiar with this, the I always it's a nice little touch, right? I always love how you know, hey, the inside of the box is a dice tray. Um, this is the rule book. 
if you know Tiny Epic Galaxies, you know Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off. I feel like this is the way to, you know, if you're at, uh, go to a family party or a place, you know, maybe like uh, when we have open game nights again, you know, this is the one to get um, to use with new players. It just simplifies things. Um, I, I actually like the icons better in this version. I think they're just a lot more clear. Um, let me show you the... So, Tiny Epic Galaxies, uh, you know, it's a dice chucking game. It's a race to 21 points, just like the original uh, Blast Off is. Um, but, you you know, you can fly over to different uh, planets to colonize them or use their abilities uh, right away. Um, let me show... So, the dice here. Uh, Jose, yeah, slow bone explosion sounds. Uh, I think these are slightly bigger than the original. I should have brought the original out here to compare. I think they're slightly bigger, but I feel like they're a lot easier to uh, see. And, you know, you have your energy, your culture. Um, oh, the gear. I forgot what that is. I know they have, like, the spaceship to fly. Is it the spaceship? To yeah, there's the spaceships to move. Huh. Let me look at the rules real quick. Hey, look, I just used the dice tray. Um... Gameplay, yeah, so you reroll dice. Okay, move a starship. What is the gear? Oh, advanced colonization. Yeah, so the colonies, instead of economic and um, diplomacy, it's life and tech. So I think that's uh, that's just uh, easier uh, entry point in the game. Energy, we still have energy and culture as the two resources in the game. Utilize galaxy, that's where you can use, after you colonize a planet, you slide it under your player mat and you could use that power which will give you additional resources. Every All the planet abilities can be summed up here, which I really enjoy about this version. Um, I think they really, they just streamlined all, all the actions. They probably, I'm sure they took out some just to make it easier to understand. But, you know, it's like you can uh, advance up a track and then this means that other players get to do an ability as well and so forth. So, yeah, the deck is definitely a lot smaller, right? So let's take a look here. So... Here's the, actually I'll show, start off with this. So the activation bay, just like the real uh, the original game, you have your dice here. And what's cool is the first three dice that you put down here or the one that you do in the converter, uh, your other players can follow by spending one culture. Whereas I think in the original game, you could you can just, you could basically follow every move, I think, I forget. Um, but I, I like the way they did the converter here better. In the original version, you had to like, I think you took two dice and to convert into one side of your choosing, right? So if I rolled like um, this one, I would in the original game, I would give up two dice in order to place, make this face whatever I wanted. In Tiny Epic Galaxy's Blast Off, you take a die, put it there, and you just spend one energy or culture, and you could set this to any side you want, which I like, I like better, okay? Uh, here are the player mats. Um, unfortunately, uh, they don't have um, a solo edition baked in. Um, I believe, um, who was I talking to? I don't know. I don't remember. Someone in Gimlin said that uh, people have already started working on a solo version. I think they might have one on BGG already. But these are all pretty much similar to the original game where you have up to seven resources of energy or culture. You have you start your ships in yours here. That uh, gets the energy. And then, here, let me show you. I like the way they did this part. Um I actually like the ships are cool too. It's got that sort of retro style spaceship, right? So you're uh, you you start with two ships here, and just like the original game, you start here with your resources. Okay, so I like the way they track this uh, better. It's easier to um, track. So here you this is um, how much energy or culture it takes to go up to the next level, right? So here it takes you two. You go up here, it takes three. I, I like how they, they design this. Uh, here's how many dice you roll. Uh, this is how many how many ships are in your galaxy, and this is how many victory points you have. So anytime you use the upgrade galaxy version or uh, action, you just move it up here, right? So here I would spend two culture or two energy. I move up here. On my next turn, I will have five dice. I have two ships, and I have one victory point. And again, uh, just like in the original game, you will have the ships here to unlock. Once you get there, that ship will go to your galaxy. James loves galaxies. Yeah, this looks neat. I, I, I'm i excited to play this. Like, I don't think I've ever played this with uh, Michelle and Lauren. Yeah, you know what? I know we haven't, but this one, this is the one I want to play with them. 
right here. Um, yeah, I really, I think this is an improvement on the original game, actually, the way they had this set up. Or the other one was like this round track, you had like, um, I think the different, like, I think it was like your galaxy marker or whatever, like that cube. So, yeah, and then you have, let me see, that is your culture. And, oh, that's uh, energy for the other player. So four players, up two to four players, pretty much like the original game, um, just streamlined down. Uh, let's look at the cards. So, you know, if you fly on here, if you fly on top of the card, then you will get this um, thing here. Uh, you can use it immediately, which is spend one energy, collect two uh, culture. Again, I love the iconography in this game. I think I think they really did a good job of um, doing this. If you go on the ad advancement track here, anytime you roll the life, you can bump this up one. And more than one player can go here, so it's a race to finish it. Once you get there, you will colonize that planet. Or your ships return to your galaxy. And this one becomes part of your galaxy right under here. So now you have four points, and then whatever you know points you're here. So let's say if you're there, you have two plus four is six. And then anytime you use this action here, the galaxy action, um, you can either spend to improve your uh, empire or you can do this ability. So this would be spending one of your resources to get that. So yeah, if you're familiar with Tiny Epic Galaxies, you are definitely familiar with Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off. Here's a culture planet. Um, you know, you you spent you just have to move up the tech track. And if you colonize this planet, again, put it here. When you use that action, you get a culture. You just bump that up here, your culture. Where's the little culture marker? I just had it there. No, that's energy. Culture's there. Use this action, bump it up there. Culture is cool because that's the one that allows you to follow um, other players on their turns, which I think is like the, the big drawing point. At least it was for me for this game. It's really neat that you can stay involved in the game even when it's not your turn. So there's really no downtime because you're watching other players and you can spend your culture in order to follow them. Really cool uh, mechanic. Um, yeah, here's some of the other cards. I like the art. Uh, it's it's got that friendly, you know, welcoming um, vibe to it. You know, it's like, hey, look at this, cool. Let's play some Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off. So maybe I'll look up the uh, solo dish, uh, solo variant, and play that um, one of these days. But yeah, this one I'll probably play with uh, Michelle and Lauren soon enough. So that is Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off. And no, that's not how I really keep my games, folks. I will clean this up uh, off camera. Okay, third game. And this one, I know Amanda's excited about this one. This is asking for troll bills. Uh, this is uh, Amanda Panda's one of her go-to work replacement games, especially for new gamers. Um, I'll open up the, this is the base game that's been out for a couple of years. It does have the Dice Tower Seal Lexons. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful gateway work replacement game. And on Monday, folks, I am going to be playing Asking for Troubles live on the Board Game Spotlight group uh, Facebook page. So if you don't already, join the Board Game Spotlight group. It's a fantastic uh, board gaming group here on Facebook. Uh, James Hudson from Skybound Games uh, runs it along with um, Derek and uh, Elizabeth Funkhauser. It's just a really friendly group. I... I enjoy it. I, it's probably my favorite. And before I, I started, um, before I started working with them, I that's probably the group I enjoy the most. Facebook, they they've gotten this reputation as being the Care Bears of um, the board game community because it, it's such a welcoming and you know there's no drama there. I mean, there's times when people create drama like any Facebook group, but they're really good about taking out trolls and. Not taking them out, but you know, just um, deleting trolls and just you know, just set, they set a really cool tone there, where which I appreciate. So on Monday, I'll be playing the expansion, uh, asking for troll bills companions. So please join me Monday. It's gonna be four p.m. Pacific, six p.m. Central, seven p.m. Eastern. We're gonna play it live. We're gonna play it with the um, expansion here. Uh, Patrick says, pretty sad for them now. Tiny Epic follow. Actually, yeah, really love the Tiny Epic um, follow stuff. So I'm going to open the base game. If you've never played it, it's a worker placement game with this really fun little um, sci-fi theme. Again, I'm a sci-fi guy. This is more along the comedy um, or just super cute. Um, and if you have any questions about this game, Amanda is in chat. Ask 
ask away a mantle knows this game I mean, she teaches it about the book she she's she's played this plain time she taught me and yeah here's your game board just a big you know planet and you just you just go around the different locations collecting resources trying to um, trade them for other resources and you're eventually going to uh, score victory points by what is it um on your turn, uh, hey, John is also in the house. Hello, Victor. Just picked up asking. Oh, cool, awesome, Victor. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us. And also, I'm, I hope you like the game. I'm, I'm sure you will, my friend. Um, yeah, so you're trying to get these troll bills, right? They're like, I, I always want to call them trolls. Is it trouble or troll bill? Trouble. Um, like these little uh, space aliens, basically, right? And you want to, like, you know, you're getting them for the points. So here's all the different locations, Paradise, Star, uh, Planet Pomi, Tyson Comet, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is basically your home base. Uh, your ship um, starts there, is that right? Yeah, and you're going to you build up uh, your various actions by adding on additional action to them. Amanda's so good at this game. I don't, I've never seen her. I don't think I've ever seen her like lose. I think she's pretty much always won. Um, you got your mega factory. These are the up, you just upgrade your resources. The end of the game is when all city cards have been revealed from the deck. Uh, these are worth different various uh, various uh, points, and you don't. Which is a really interesting twist. You don't know what's going to be scored. I, I think one of them are um, revealed at various points of the game randomly. So then that's when you know when things are being scored. Um, and again, if I'm incorrect, uh, Amanda will be happy to. Um, uh, tell us what's, uh, uh, what's going on. Uh, yeah, James, uh, James Hunts is a great guy. Agreed. Uh, Amanda is playing it today. Well, 11 and Pacific about one hour. Yeah, folks, you want to see the game played. This is the person to, uh, follow. Amanda has taught this game many times and always a good time. <laughs> John. So, oh, okay. So I believe, okay. So John and Amanda are playing. It. Yeah. So good luck, John and Amanda. Uh, Patrick's been waffling on the all in pledge. Uh, well, this is the base game. It's um, I would call it a gateway worker placement game. Um, I mean, the components are great. We've got the really, you know, nice art, very friendly sci-fi theme. Uh, you do have these are cool. The little aliens and stuff. Those give you special abilities when you go to their locations. Yeah, these these are like little standees. Uh, these are, I think these are the credits. Like that's, yeah, the credit, the currency. Oh, one fell out already. Okay. Yeah, who is the board? I, I love the board. It's just a big, big planet, you know, or big galaxy with different planets on them where you can go, go to the different places to get action, um, work placement. Um, spots so what you do like uh, and amanda uh, does a good job of pointing this out whenever you go it's unlike other worker placement games where you get blocked uh you bump players off so if your ship is here you know that doesn't mean i can't go there to get this resource i can go there but it'll bump you off and you get it back in play so basically it's similar to god what was that game uh you know the the euphoria from stonemeyer where you would place your dice there and you would get your dice worker back. This is similar to that, where you're never really blocked, but you're giving your opponent their ship back, and that gives them an action. Otherwise, if you have no ships, if your ships are all on board, you have to spend an action, you know, resting or whatever to get all your workers back. So I like that one. Uh, James says, oh, I probably wasn't Tribble, like uh, start. Okay, cool, yeah, but now, um, what is it? Um, what is the name of this game? Jeez. <laughs> Uh, asking for tribbles, asking for tribbles, troubles, troubles. Well, asking for tribbles, we'll, we'll call it. Uh, this is where you're going to place other, I think those are the other um, uh, currency or special abilities. So hey, go here, you get money, you get two money, and then one, you, that's where you draw the cards, which have the uh, aliens on them for special actions. Here are the cards. I, I love the uh, ships here. They, they remind me of Klingon ships, actually. Like one, okay, one reminds me of, you know, the USS Enterprise. But some of these um, have that sort of like Klingon-y look, I think. Klingon ships. Uh, 
It was like a little classic UFOs flying saucer style and so forth. Oops. Uh, these are the gems and stuff, resources. What is this? Oh, that's the one I thought. Of. Oh, here are the cards. Let me uh, open up the cards. You all can take a look at these. Patrick, I had a uh, white Pomeranium named Tribbles. Really? You had a, a dog named Tribbles? Cool. Was it named after the Star Trek series? Okay. So, yeah, if you get, like, the smuggler um, from that one spot on the board, now you, this uh, for well knows a guy who knows a guy, pick any one connection card available on the board and add it to your ship card on the asteroid for free. Yeah, all kinds of different ones. These are all funny. Some of them have a little take that to them, I believe. Um, so the sheriff. And then here are those, um, the troll bill, troll bill, triple cards, uh, victory points, what you get immediately, uh, what it costs to get these. Um, so this one's going to cost three carrots and three cubes and so forth. Great connection, kid. Don't get cocky. A smuggler, right? Looks like someone we may know from a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> this one's like a dinosaur. Hi, Monique. Hey, folks. Monique is in the house. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Monique um, and Naveen joined me the other day on uh, Twitch, and we played a game of um, Tokaido. Uh, but more importantly, if you haven't seen it already, please go to Monique's channel uh, before you play on YouTube. It's one of my favorite uh, channels. I mean, the quality that her and Naveen, the, the quality of their work is just outstanding. Uh, some of the best uh, how to play videos and have uh, some of the best playthroughs. And she did this thing this week that just blew me away. It was for, she is a fellow Filipino American, Filipino American. And we did something, she did something for Filipino American History Month. Uh, she sang a song in Tagalog and then she highlighted a bunch of us fellow Filipino content creators and board games. And oh, like it, it, was, it was amazing. So, um, Please check out her page, uh, follow before you play. And uh, if anything, I mean, I posted on my Facebook, uh, watch that video, it's just wonderful. Thank you again, Monique, for including us. Um, here are, yeah, here's the sheriff. I, I love this art, it's got that really, it's it's very kid friendly. So I feel like, um, I don't know, Amanda, have you taught this to uh, kids? Um, I, I feel like this is one that kids would be into um, just based on the art alone. Not too much. Okay, there's a bounty hunter. Doesn't really look like Boba Fett, but there's the traitor, so forth. Like dino space dinos and space slugs and traps. Very friendly, very friendly. I mean, really funny art. So forth. What is that? The racer. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, thanks, Monique. Right back at you. Okay, so that's that, folks. Um, let's look at the expansion now. So the expansion is what um, I have uh, that we're going to be playing on Monday on Board Game Spotlight, um, their Facebook page. So this is just the base game. Uh, let's look at the expansion. Now, the expansion is a, a prototype. So again, not final at all, but just right off the bat, you can sort of see they've got you know the parodies of certain characters. I mean, this looks like, uh, was it Star-Lord? Looks just like a, a green uh, Captain Kirk and uh, others as well. What is this? Uh, I forget. What, is this like? No, not the Predator. But anyways, uh, Companions. So this is a prototype, right? There's nothing on the back yet. So just bear that in mind as we open it up. Companions. What this is going to do is it adds like the secondary board. The friendship board, friendship, right? Two words. Uh, you get new uh, trouble cards, shard cards. So I, uh, this is the new resource, shards. Okay, uh, Amanda. Okay, uh, Lurk mode. Thanks, Amanda, for hanging out. Good luck at eleven with your game. So just a reminder, folks. Amanda and John are going to be playing the base game at eleven a.m. on Amanda's Twitch channel. Um, you also have in this expansion the dials. You have. Uh, Point victory point tokens. Um, so you oh okay. So you're actually going to use the new uh, Trollbills uh, deck provided with the expansion. Okay, uh, set up exactly as the original deck, and then you're going to have these extra cards here, companion cards, which I believe once you go to a certain section on the board, you will yeah. 
So it looks like over this planet here on the base game, you add this, you'll be able to get um, friendship cards, which give you um, additional abilities and stuff. So, you know, you land here, players will take a pairing of a companion card and a shard card. So one's a, a shard card, one is a ship card, I believe. Okay. Oh, John, my bad. It'll be on John's um, channel, uh, Book of Nerds, folks. Uh, they'll be playing uh, Asking for Troll Bills. Okay, so here's the shard card here. Here's the companion cards. Again, they give you new abilities and stuff, which wasn't in the base game. You get abilities and um, new powers and new um, this new resource, shards. Okay, and why do I want shards? Funny, I would ask, right? It says here in the rule book, shards are an alternative way to collect troll bills. Some troll bills or troll bills uh, will take other resources or shards, while some will only take shards. Shards still on your shard card may not be spent to collect troll bills. Oh, okay. And they're worth one victory point each at the end of the game. Uh, here's all the, the quirk clarifications. Quirks are designed to be a nuisance to the player who has the companion. If there's ever a question how they work, uh, just read it here. There's a bunch of them here. And then, yeah, this uh, may be added in the Kickstarter campaign. So the Kickstarter campaign is live right now. Uh, so check them, uh, check it out. They're breaking games um, and cracking games are in conjunction cr with cracking games. They're running a Kickstarter. So it looks like they're going to hopefully add four more cards here. Again, this is a prototype. This, I mean, this is, yeah, just uh, cardboard. They put it together here. Um, your companion, your shard um, abilities here. So, oh, does this kick it up to, so the base game plays two to seven players. I wonder if this, Three, four, five. So, okay, yeah, it does have seven. I thought for a second there, like it cut down the player count, which seemed weird to me because I didn't see all the player boards. But yeah, it does have seven. Um, this is your dial, and it looks like you're going to choose like which one activates or whatever. Um, here are the shard tokens. Again, these are prototypes, folks. The victory points. The friendship board, which you're going to add to... Um, the outer ring of that one planet in the galaxy. And um, here are the extra cards. So we have the hunter, right? Oh, okay, there's the quirks they were talking about. And see, you're going to slot this in here, right? Slot this in here and quirk one, quirk two, and quirk three. Okay. And I believe this is a shard card, which is going to go here. Okay, so it looks like this is going to, like, um, work with each other here. Interesting. Okay. So shards, how like how many shards you can get, right? And victory points. The victory points are these uh, tentacle things here. So, yeah, this is, uh, is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this um, because it's adding those, like, sort of, like, asymmetric um, abilities uh, for the players and also how you um, use the shards. Oh, okay, so here's an ability here where... When you bump someone off, you it looks like you can convert a carrot to a shard. Or no, is that the shard? Yeah. And then this one, I don't know. I'll have to read that. Oh, pick up the ship. Cool. So different ways to get your ships back as well. Here's... <laughs> so this is Mr. Spack. I, I'm assuming it's pronounced Mr. Spock with, with an A. And it looks more like um, Kurt to me. But it, it does, he does have that pointy ear. This the needs of this one outweigh the needs of yours. <laughs> oh, the classic uh, was it Star Trek Two Wrath of Khan quote sort of turned upside down. Folks, what's your favorite Star Trek movie? Um, uh, mine is the second one, Wrath of Khan, and I'm sticking by it. I don't think there is another. I don't think there's any other answer except for the second one. Um, so this one here, you cannot gain credits from connections. When you gain credits, gain one less. And, ooh, Quirk 3, you may not gain credits at all. So it looks like these are going to play off of each other, the ones that you um, random. I guess, well, they set up randomly, and then you're going to select a pair, and that'll be your um, thing here. Mr. Spock from Boston. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Nice, John. He's from Boston. Yeah, he had to go pack the car. Um, apologies to my uh, friends in Boston. Um, Chris Pine. Uh, Chris Pine is a fine uh, Captain Kirk. I think he... He nails Kirk. I think he, he is he is a great Captain Kirk, but I still think my I mean the the best movie is Star Trek II: Wrath of Khan. Come on, folks. Uh, here are the new trouble cards. So this is going to replace the the original deck. So this you know because it has shards, the new resource. 
they can buy these trolls for. Again, different uh, victory points at the end of the game and then the uh, immediate action. Actually, I think this is the one where if you throw the trouble like into the sun, that's when you get these um, resources. So you can like ho hold these in your hand. Um, and then at, once you go to the sun action, you can throw them all at the same time and just pick up a ton of resources at once. I, I believe that's how it works. Um, Patrick, the new series first movie, I forget the title, is my entry in Star Trek altogether. Oh, okay, it came very late to the... Yeah, the, the newest, the the J.J. Abrams um, one, just fine. I, I think those are terrific movies. At least the first one was. What was the second one? I think the second one was the one they, way they redid Khan, right, with Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. The original, the original Star Trek, uh, the second one, Wrath of Khan, is still my favorite. The music in that one, listen to the music. The second one, I, I forget the name of the, the composer. Was it James... Corner or Warner or something like that. Like the music in that one's so good. Like I'll put that soundtrack up against any sci-fi soundtrack. Anyways, those are all the cards, folks. That is asking for Troll Bills, the Companions expansion um, prototype. I'll be playing that Monday uh, with Lauren. Actually, we're going to be. Uh, we got uh, Lauren coming in um, that day. She'll be home and um, taking a break from school with me to play this game. So I'm excited about that. That is um, asking for troll bills. Trolls. Asking for trolls. That, that's, I think that's how you say it. Got one more thing, folks, to open up. Uh, this is actually two more things. So these are, this literally just showed up at my door last night. Uh, these are the new Tiny Towns Villagers and Tiny Trees expansions for Tiny Towns, which is a, a game that I love. Um, from AEG, it's basically like a roll and write, but without the rolling and writing, like everyone, you flip over cards and, or you announce, um, there, there's two ways to play it. One way, the solo ways, you, you're gonna flip up cards and get the resources and put them on your board. The other way with multiplayer, someone's gonna call a resource and then you all have to place that resource um, on your board. So it's sort of like got that roll and write feel without it. Um, it's a very cool puzzle. Uh, very like it's got that whole spatial element to it. <laughs> Patrick, I'm in. I love it. Patrick's just like insta buy. Yeah. So here's um. So this is the tiny expansion for Tiny Towns. Uh, base game required. Tiny trees. So this is. Well, we'll save the big one for last. So there is another expansion that was out um, either earlier this year or la late last year called Fortune. Fortune was fine. It introduced the gold um, resource. I thought it was it was good. I don't think it was like one of those like you need the expansion, right? Because I, I really like the base game. Um, but the gold, the Fortune one did give you some new cards, you know, some new buildings and stuff. So that was cool. Um, tiny Town, Tiny Trees, a tiny tree expansion. So you get... Little trees. They're the little tree um, tokens. Again, all the wood um, for the AEG games, uh, I, I always appreciate. They, they do a really great job cutting out these little meeples. So we have trees, folks. Little tree meeples. So, and then little, oh, little acorns. Okay. Little acorns. Very cool. Um, that is. So you're also going to get a monument. There's a new monument. The treetops. I love the art too. It's so cute, right? The little animals and stuff. Oh, whoa, what? Are you really serious? You're going to build this? Wow, look at that. So this building needs one for your resources to be construction, to be constructed. Minimum two resources for each building already in your town. Interesting. So the more buildings you have in your town, the fewer resources it needs or it will need to be built. Interesting. Okay, so let's just take a look at it real quick. In Tiny Trees, each mayor has a chance to watch a tree grow in their town. However, each tree only grows if it is in the only empty square on a player's board. Whoa. After normal Tiny Town setup, give each player a seed, the acorn. Each player should strategically place their acorn in an empty square on the player board. During each round, the square containing your acorn is treated as an empty square for all constructing a resource Resource placement placement purposes. Each player's acorn will be used in three ways. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Nice. Okay. I did they play this? Now AEG, they they stream tiny towns every day. Well, almost every day on uh at noon Pacific on their uh Facebook channel and all their socials, I think. 
Um, they you they you were they were doing like they've done like 150, which is amazing. Um, not only of tiny towns, but they'll do it with like I know that I'm pretty sure they show the prototype of this, and they also do like Space Base and a couple of their other games. But um, Josh Wood, the designer, one of the designers, and then oh yeah, and Peter McPherson, they're almost always in those streams. It, it's pretty cool. Um, I got to play them once; it was fun. I think Monique did as well. Um, so, anyways, this is Tiny Towns, Tiny Trees expansion, like a mini expansion. Now, this is Tiny Town Villagers. Okay, again, I love the artwork, all the little animals, super cute. Um, I see like a squirrel there. Cooperate, interesting. Let me get some of my tea here. So, in Tiny Town Villagers, uh, word has spread far and wide of a thriving little civilization in the forest. Creatures with incredible, incredible talents from engineers to merchants have come to visit. Oh, they offer the most astute town mayors their skills, which can transform buildings, control the influx of resources, and perform impressive architectural feats. Okay, very nice. So it looks like these are the um, uh, people. So you can cut corners, you can cooperate. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, base game required. Let, let's open this up, folks. Where's my blade? All right. Do y'all like Tiny Towns? Uh, this I, I love Tiny Towns. We're going to have to play this one. I, I'll, I've been talking to some people about playing this live on stream. Hopefully, hopefully next week, because uh, we're all big fans of, of this game. Okay. Uh, there. Tiny Towns Villagers. All right, set up. Oh, you get a lodge board? Oh, okay, there's another board. Oh, a little messy in here. Look at this. Get your little lodge board. Interesting. Oh, the art is just adorbs, right? Did I just say adorbs? Is that still a thing people say? Um, so everyone's going to get a lodge board. And it looks like you're going to like track resources and stuff there. Whoops. Wasn't it just some of the new Star... Oh, no, I was thinking the Star uh, Star Trek Wrath of Khan, uh, the second uh, original movie, Patrick, is the one that um, I'm thinking of that I really enjoy. First Contact. Okay, yeah. John says, um, First Contact, that's the, the, the new generation, the first one, right? Or the second movie? Okay, so the different player counts looks like 2+. plus. Oh, Solo, cool. So here's the abilities. Okay, construct any building with one fewer resource. Nice. Place a resource of your choice in your town. That's the forage. Scrap. Do not place a resource name by another player. Okay. Uh, fill your chest with three. Is that money? Okay, so this can be used with the uh, other expansions. Renovate. Play, replace any building in your town with any other building type. Neither can be a monument. Ooh, cool, cool, cool. And here are the new wood. Thank you, Monique. Adorbs. All the little creatures. I love the creature meeples. The it have a looks like you have a bird. Bird. Um, like a porcupine or a hedgehog. Squirrel. Squirrel. Um, a mouse or a rat. Uh, did we do the bird already? Yeah, bird. Okay, so several types of creatures there. So you get your lodge board. You're going to get three villager meeple. Okay, it does not matter what uh, animal they represent. Okay. And then you place them on a different corner of your board. Villager examples. So, oh, village villager placement and movement. Interesting. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Re if you don't use a resource to construct a building that round, the villager must move at the end of the round to an orthogonally adjacent empty square. If there's no such empty square, the villager is placed on the player's lodge board. Okay. Round overview. Scoring. Okay, so yeah, the villagers are your uh, player abilities. I wonder, how do you get your... Um, give each player... Sort the new... Separate the... Have cost of one. Oh, okay. Shuffle the two piles down. Draw one in place. Okay, so these are going to be cost. What is it? Three, one. Okay, it looks like these are the costs. Like the three, 
the one and so forth. And you're gonna select a few, put them out, and then they are public and you can spend to uh, hire the villagers. Okay. Oh, there's tiny tiers. This is for the most experienced Tiny Towns players seeking the ultimate challenge. Oh, look at that. Maybe we'll have to try that and uh, fail miserably. That would be fun. Um, it looks like it's the same. Yeah, Master Builder names a resource. Take a resource, place it in an empty square, and then you may construct buildings on your turn that you know match the pattern, right? And then oh, again, do some clear. So it's adding a, another board. Here's the building clarifications. Let's look real quick at the new cards here. Yeah, so you're gonna have new like you know these all each uh, type of building. They're gonna have new ones like the chapel, new chapels or whatever called the inn and so forth. Uh, vegetable patch, two yellows and browns. Again, all you're doing is when you place the pieces on board, folks, um, and you can transpose these and flip them around. Once you build that, you may build that building and this gives you that ability. Or you, So this one feeds six buildings that are not adjacent to other feeding buildings. The nectar farm. Yeah, the art is terrific in this. Forge, citadel. Adventurers Guild. Oh, okay. Here's a couple, a bunch of new monuments as well. Half Moon Library. Okay, I'm all about libraries. This is worth five victory points. After constructing, you may only construct building types you have at least one of in your town. Oh, okay. So you want to build this one a little later in the game because if you build it right away, you won't be able to build uh, other buildings. Interesting. Okay. Oh, the Opera House. One victory point per row and column with no duplicate buildings. The Clearfall Quarry, uh, five victory points if adjacent to an empty square, public house, brewery, and so forth. Cool, cool, cool. Apothecary. And the Outhouse <laughs> holds one resource. When another player names a resource, you may place it on the Outhouse. Interesting. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, this is gonna. This adds that whole new um, little board, the lodge board. It has all the villagers, the um, extra player abilities, and so forth. That looks cool. I'm excited to play this one, folks. I mean, I'm a Tiny Towns fan already, so you give me new stuff for this game, I am all about it. Um, uh, looks like Patrick's. Uh, yeah, he he's in for this one. Um, and this is a game, folks. That's super easy to play on. Uh, through Zoom or Skype with your friends and family. Uh, we will be, we'll definitely be streaming it at some point on Twitch. And then y'all, you know, you can join in. And I, I'm pretty sure that Amanda one time uh, played using just graph paper. You can totally use graph paper because I think it's like a five by five grid and you're just, you just hand write. Cause I mean, it really does feel like a roll write. You can just hand write the buildings that you build as you, you know, collect resources. Okay. So that is it, folks. Um, yeah, is that it? Yeah, that's those are all the games I was going to um, unbox and talk about. Any uh, games that y'all want to talk about before I get out of here? i got a few more minutes. Um, let me Actually, let me put all these pieces back together here so I don't lose anything. I want to thank you all again for joining me. Appreciate y'all hanging out. Oh, these going here. Yeah, so the trees, I'm going to add that one as well. So you can add the trees and the villagers at the same time. All of a sudden, there's like a bunch of stuff you can, you're going to have to think about. It, it just got like way thinkier. I mean, that game is thinky as it is. It's a, it's a nice little puzzle. But you add this stuff into it. Oh, man. I'm down. Down, down, down. Throw these in here. Hold up. Yeah. I'm going to put, um, oh, you know what? I can just dump this. Like so, I'll go there, get rid of that. Oh, thanks, Monique. Thanks for stopping by. Much appreciated. Put this here. There's that. That's trash. That's trash. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I wonder if I should do this. Why don't we try this, folks? I've got some time to kill here. Um, why don't we? I'm gonna do a crossword puzzle. Y'all wanna? Y'all wanna do a crossword puzzle with me? Let's do that. 
Uh, let me get this keyboard here. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna. I don't know about y'all. I love crossword puzzles. Um, I'm going to do. Let's see. I haven't done any this week, so I go to the LA Times. I, I enjoy the LA Times crossword puzzle. Uh, we are going to do a crossword puzzle. Uh, John asks, "Have you played the WWF game yet?" No, not yet, man. And I'm dying to play it. Um, you know, it, it's got all the old school WWF characters that I like, except for The Rock. They didn't have The Rock because I'm sure, like, excuse me, licensing agreements or whatever. But um, that game looks so up my alley. Uh, let me share this, folks. I want to let, let's do a crossword together, shall we? Uh, stop this. So, oh, hi. Oh, my face is big. Oh, did y'all see? I've got my Catan shirt. Um, we're going to be playing Catan, I think, next Saturday. We played it last Sunday. We played the base game, me, Michelle, and Lauren, or Michelle, Lauren, and I. Um, but on, I think, next Saturday, or maybe the following, we're going to play. Uh, the Catan with the Cities and Knights expansion, which we've never we've never played, so I'm excited about that. Um, Patrick says I'm terrible at them, good with numbers, not so. See, and that, I'm the total opposite, Patrick. I suck at Sudoku, but I love crosswords. So uh, let me share this screen here. Let, let's take a look at the um, LA Times crossword. I, I'm a big. Uh, I, I love the LA Times. Like, it's just the LA, you know, the LA and me. Speaking of LA, did you know the Lakers and the Dodgers are world champions in their respective sports. Uh, okay, here is this. I wonder if I can make this bigger. Where's the settings? Oh, maybe the view settings. I can crank this up a little bit. What's this? Can I X out this? Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so this is June Honorees. This is the puzzle from this past Monday. And... What are the settings here? Um, error check. I'm going to turn the error check mode on so it shows us if, if I mess up, which I, I tend to do a lot of. Um, move on, next clue, stay in current clue. Okay. Uh, love crossword puzzles, awesome, cool. I love the shirt, Lynn. oh, awesome, cool. Monique, yeah, that's the best expansion, good to hear. Okay, yeah, we're, we're playing that. Um, again, full disclosure, Catan recently sponsored a channel for a few episodes, or they they, they did one episode. They're going to do a few more with us, and they sent us some great swag as well. Speaking of, i got to show you this. You know, hold on just a second, folks. Like, they even sent us a clock. I mean, how cool is this? This is stuff you can get at their uh, store. So uh, we have a Catan clock. It is Catan O'Clock. I've been waiting to use that for so long. It's Catan 20, right? So we we, uh, we haven't put it up yet. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best place. It may just go behind us up there. But yeah, the Catan o'clock or Catan. I've been saying Catan. I know it's Catan. I'm trying to get myself uh, to say that. But anyways, um, really like the Game of Thrones version. Yeah, that one was fun. Uh, it was a three-peat. You, you know what? Yeah, that's right, John. It was a three-peat, folks. The Lakers, Dodgers, and John beating the Ottoman wingspan. That was you should you should make yourself a championship belt, um, John, for that achievement. Yeah, the Catan Catan plug. I, I love it. You know, if I was like like um, what's his name? Um, gosh, what's that from from Public Enemy? Not Chuck D. Flavor Flav. You could totally like put this on a chain and wear it around. You know, maybe the okay. If we do, well, someday. Next year, the year after, we do live conventions again. So what do you think? Make this into a, a necklace? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So fun. Catan 30. Yes, it is Catan 30. So, yeah, they sent us a bunch of cool swag. Um, uh, we'll, we'll reveal that as uh, when we play games and stuff. But um, I, I love the shirt. It's, you know, let's roll. So, yeah, Flavor Flav. Thank you, John. Hey, fun fact. I met Flavor Flav in Vegas uh, a few years ago. I'll have to post to share that picture. It's really cool. Really nice guy. It's like Flav. It's like yo, and um, I, I met him at the South Point Hotel in Vegas. Uh, Michelle and I were staying there, just hanging out and, and just randomly walking through a casino. And it looked like he was going to spend the night. I think he lives out there, but he was at there for some I don't know something. And I said, Flav, what's up? Can I get a picture? He's like, Oh yeah. So we go there. I was like, Hey, you know, I, I told him, Hey, big fan, how you doing? Um, and Flav's like, Oh, you know, um. I want to get the quote right. He gave me this really, um, I said, how you doing, Flav? And Flavor Flav said, 
oh, you know, like a like a coat, uh, like what is it? Like I'm I, I'm doing just like a coat. I'm hanging in there. I was like, Flay, thanks, man. So we took a picture. Um, Michelle, Michelle took the picture. It's one of those funny celebrity sighting moments. Super nice guy. Uh, he's a lot shorter than I thought he would. I thought he, for some reason I thought he was taller, but yeah, super nice. Victor is in the house. Hey, Victor, thanks for joining us. Yay. Victor and I just played um, Wardlings, our pen ultimate episode. It was a fun episode. I, I love playing that game uh, with Victor, Irene, and um, Heidi. And we've got one more episode. We're wrapping up our campaign next week, and it's gonna be it's gonna be bittersweet. Uh, you know, I've said this before. I've really enjoyed getting back into role playing games this year, and a big part of it has been Wardlings and you know the crew there, just so talented and. Um, it's been a lot of, it's been such a learning experience for me. I, I've learned a lot as far as role-playing games and I've, I've relearned how to not relearn, but I've just rediscovered my, my love of them. It's been a lot of fun and, uh, yeah, so good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see what happens. Like we were there, we got beat up this last episode. There was this, the, the big baddie, uh, lady Dorset, she kicked our butts all over the place, but we did, you know, fire back at her. Uh, again, these are kids. We are like kids and tweens. I think we're all, I don't know if anyone's a tween yet, but um, these are younger kids that are, you know, trying to be, you know, a, a group of adventurers and stuff. And oh, it's so much fun. Okay. So, yes, welcome, Victor, as well. We're going to, we're just hanging out, folks, um, playing game, or I just unboxed a bunch of games. What are y'all playing this weekend? Um, and I decided, hey, what the heck? I got a little time here. Let's play a, a do a crossword. Uh, <laughs> Victor still <laughs> that was that made me laugh. So in the in the game yesterday in Wardlings, um, the the big baddie, Lacey, the Lady Dorset, was interrogating me and Heidi, Heidi's character Junie, and it was us two. And the you know Victor's character and Irene's character were elsewhere. And the Lady Dorset says, "Who are you? Blah blah blah. What do you want?" And you know Junie's like. On Junie, you know, and my character is Mtaru, but Victor's character is Zylo. So I was like, I was scared. I was like, oh, I'm Zylo. <laughs> we had such a good laugh about that. I was, I was dying when I said it. But uh, anyways, let's look at this. So this uh, crossword here, uh, you know what? I'm going to put it on this side here so I can look at y'all here. Um, how can I do this? Can I? Make this box smaller. Okay, yeah. Okay, this way I can see the chat still too. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So chat goes there. And then my crossword goes here. Okay, cool. So I can still see all. Whoops. Awesome. So I got this. I got a couple of new monitors and... Um, I wanted to match up these. I've got two um, two monitors set up here, but I gave the really good one. Michelle ended up with her, her office. It's like that's the monitor I want. I want to get that monitor back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Does that okay? That looks okay, right? Okay, cool. So yeah, in the chat, folks, uh, let, let's do this crossword. So June honorees. Okay, I have no idea. What are my settings? So the settings are error check mode is on, timer is on, skip. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so I'm just going to skip over that because I do not know what that is. But I pretty much, I'm pretty sure hist A is pssst. Okay. Tool for carved cutting. Machete? Nope. And you'll see there I have the error thing on, so it's not machete, and that wouldn't have fit anyways. I'm the type, if I don't know it, I just skip right away to the next word. Uh, devoured, say, so eight. State bordering Lake Erie. Y'all know, where's Lake Erie? Iowa? No. Dressed like a justice. Uh, in robe. In robe. Actual shape wildflower of the Midwest. I do not know my flower. Sunflower? No. Well, it starts with an S. Oh, what's it? Oh yeah, there's so there's gonna be some lag. So just go ahead and you know keep answering. If I, if I need help, I will look in the chat. Really impressive in slang. Asking for a saucer of milk, maybe. Uh, New York, 
for let's see new york is so state boarding lake erie it's a four letter state um astral shaped what's it i have no idea really impressive in slang wow Asking for a saucer or milk, maybe. Meow. Meow. What do you do? Meowed? No. Meow ask? No. It's meow something. Meow at? Meow for? No? Wow. Okay, I'm going to leave meow. Let's go to the next one. Oh, Ohio. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Ohio. Nice. 23, soft fly ball. Soft fly pop up. No, it must not be a uh, baseball question. Soft fly ball. Utmost degree, the nth, nth degree. Meowing. Thank you, John. Thank you. Shout out to comment, John's cat. Comment is always hanging out on John's uh, Book of Nerds channel. And yeah, if you're just joining us, welcome, folks. Uh, my name is Ruel. This is Rolling with Ruel, Friday Fun Day. Um, I always uh, unbox and talk about games on Friday, 9 a.m. here on uh, Facebook and YouTube. So welcome wherever you're joining us from. Uh, today, I decided, hey, after unboxing the games, just want to play uh, Crossword real quick. Um, I love word games. I'm a big word game fan. And Crosswords, this is something that was passed down to me from my father, basically. I remember as a kid growing up, my dad would always do the LA Times crossword you know, at breakfast. And then we'd be out sometimes and he would just like he had cut out like the crossword or it was actually the jumble um, puzzle, the word puzzle. And he would always have it in his pocket with a pen and he'd just do it randomly, you know, wherever we were, like the restaurant or whatever. So it was his jam. And again, I always marveled at that because uh, my father, this is uh, English is his, I think, third language. He knows Tagalog, Ilocano. Uh, he knows a little bit of Spanish. My mom's a better Spanish speaker than he is. But yeah, for someone that I don't know if it, you know, I never I should ask him like how he got into crosswords. Maybe it was his way of like learning the language. But I mean, he knew English when he came to this country. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those things as a kid. And then I know me and my brothers, you know, we're always like doing jumbles or crosswords or whatever. So uh, helpful hint and aid. No, uh, let's see. Oh, don't give cats milk. Really, John? Is that not not a thing? Uh, veer off cur course. Business sector involving merchandise. Okay, I'm just going to keep popping over. Performing in person. Walking on water as Jesus is. Is that a miracle? It is a miracle. Take for granted. Speaker number one's breath. Humble. Humble's the What do you, how do you speak under one's breath? Uh, heated dispute and argument. No. Clark's co-worker, Lois. You know the pop culture stuff. Lionel products. Are those electric trains? Lionel. Don't they make electric trains? Okay, so I don't know Big Bang Theory. You'll have to help me with that. Mutter. Thank you, John. Nice. Ali on the big game. I think that's the one like person um, person of color on that show, right? Undoubtedly, yes. Key next to the space bar. Is it alt? It is alt. Oh, William Wilson in the house. Thank you, William. Oh, Patrick's grandfather collected um, trains. Nice. I'm going to move this over here. Get this over here. New Zealand uh, native, that's a Maori. Site for speeding ticket, no. Advise of danger, warn. Love concoction, ocean. Backpacker snack and a hint to the circle letters. Oh, trail mix. So that's your hint to the uh, circle letters, folks. 62 across, first in a playoff series. Um, Game one, no. Uh, Patrick, uh, oh, hey, Mike. Mike is in the house, 46 across. Raj, thank you. Mike, hope you and um, Kim are doing well. So send my regards, please. 
Uh, 64, biology lab gel. Okay, scientists, help me out here. Hmm. Genesis fruit eater. Oh, it's got to be Eve. House speaker Nancy Pelosi. Richable flammable pile. A pyre. Checkers color. Well, if it's not black, it's got to be red. So cool. We've got those. Uh, let's look at 46 down. See what we have here. Aimless sort is a roamer. Uh, 47 hit the big time. You have arrived. And 48 brought bad luck to jinxed. Okay. Uh, let's start with the downs now. We'll start with number one. Um, so elapse as time. Can I resize this? No. Okay. Elapse as time. 62 down. Science gel. Alginate. Huh. Where was that one at? Was that this one? Biology. It is a four-letter word, uh, 64 across, Patrick. We'll try algae. Maybe you're, maybe it's a, oh, no. It does start with an A. I'll leave the A there. Let's go back to one down. Elapses time. Number two down. Number one, Hun. The, that is Attila. Thanks, Monique, for joining us. Have a great day. Really appreciate it. Kylan, is it? Thank you, Kylan. So is it? Agar, Agar, not a science guy, but thank you. Great, great call. Underwater herbivore. Oops. Four down. Uh, DC Insider, a uh, pole. Five down. Wedge shaped leveling piece, a shim. Uh, six down. Again, Monique just left, folks. Please follow her on uh, Instagram and YouTube. Her and her partner, Naveen, do fantastic uh, playthroughs uh, under the channel Before You Play. So good. They are also starting to do live streaming as well, which I, I'm I'm so glad they're doing. They're, they're just wonderful people and great content creators. Uh, end of Jane or June? Jane or June? What the heck? We're at six down, folks. Huh. Uh, seven down. Oh. Now I can't see this. Uh, RAV4 Automaker. That's a Toyota. Uh, John says the Insta check, uh, Insta check would drive me nuts. Really? Uh, Star Wars Warrior, the Jedi. I'm always happy when they have Star Wars um, question, um, clues. Uh, Party 2. Oops. In on? Yep, in on. Uh, pirates rum drink is grog. Nursery buy uh, you buy sod. Lawyers organization is that American Bar Association ABA? Yep. Exchange marriage vows wed. So we finished some across here. Let's take a look. Tool for curve cutting. Oh, jigsaw, duh. And nineteen. The what's it is a doodad. <laughs> Six down is silence. Nice, John. Oh, nope. So silent. It's end of Jane or June. June, Jane's. What is that? What is that, Mike? Silent? Not silent. Jane or June? Jane's. Oh, I'm going to have to come back to that, folks. Uh, let's do 18 down. Old MGM rival. I believe that's RKO, right? The. Uh, What's his name? Um, Citizen Kane. Well, Orson Welles is an uh, old studio, right? A sudden fancy. Do something on a whim. Kind of scream. Ah, Silent E. Thank you. End of Jane or June. Silent E. Very nice. I always, I, I always like clues like that. Clever, right? Kind of screen. Let's go to diplomacy. That is tact. Points are not scheduled to play as a pro team. Um, bye week off. Not scheduled to play as a pro team. I, I think it's a bye week, but let's go 28. Look intently at uh, Seer Beer. No, Lear. No. Continue. 31. Three time Wimbledon winner is Chris Everett. Um, we gotta move this down. Why does this go automatically up here? Spanish citrus fruit, a limon, one of my favorites. 
obvious observation. Idol, thank you, Mike. Let's go back to 27. Not scheduled to play as a pro team. Idol, very nice. Uh, obvious observation in number 33 is a truism. 34 down, stinkers. Rats. 35, garage job. You get an oil and lube. 37 down, football rival of Navy. That is the Army. Tree helps it keep its shape. Tree helps it keep its shape. A tree. Shoe? Shoe tree, yeah. 39, soap bubbles. Okay, y'all going to have to be helping with that. Uh, 42, ob obnoxious tyke, a brat. 43, arrangement of church services, liturgy. Excuse me. Now let's move this up a little. Brew pub fixture. Some kind of tap, right? It's a tap. Ale tap. Skid Row Denizen. Wino. Some reddish deer. Does? Nope, not a doe. Uh, 55, crucifix letters. Oh, gosh, I should know this. <laughs> Which I don't. Jack who preceded Carson. That is Jack Parr. A uh, burst pop. Fifty nine down. Reveal in verse. Uh, ode. No. Is it or? I think it's or. Like before. No. Uh, Sixty down. Business card abbreviation. T. Wow. Uh, oh, we're back to one across. June honorees. What's Get the BAs? No. Henry, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Yes, obviously, I am the lapsed Catholic in our household. <laughs> uh, June Aries, is it seniors? I'll think with an S. Let, let's move on. Astral shaped wildflower of the American West. Star lily. Okay. Really impressive in slang. I was thinking dope, but. Something with it. sick. Oh, yeah, it's sick. Dope. Okay. Soft fly ball. I thought it was a pop up, but a blooper? A bloop? Yeah, bloop single. Yep. The Dodgers, by the way. A uh, helpful hint. A tid. Tip. There it is. Tip. 29. Veer off course. Don't know that. Let's go to the business sector involving merchandise. Looks like retail trade. Um, one across junior honorees P. Thank you, William. Th uh, thank you, Wilhelm and Mike. Appreciate the help. Uh, let's go to 35 performing in person. We are live. Uh, 37 across take for granted. Assume. Uh oh, do I have to replace the batteries of my keyboard? It's a little wonky right now. Yeah, I think the batteries are dying on my keyboard. Uh, heated dispute. Uh-oh. A rhubarb. I did not, you know, I, think, I, I knew of a barb, but a rhubarb. Is that short for barb? I know, it's like a, a food, right? Okay. Uh, Lionel products. Oh, model trains. I thought it was electric trains. Okay, so we were on the right right path there, Patrick. Trains. Uh, site for speeding, you get written up or write up. 63 across first in a playoff series. I thought it was game one. What is the first in an opener? The opener. Okay. I see you. I see you. Yeah, I need to replace the batteries in this thing. It's dying. Okay, uh, let's go down to one down now. Elapses time, so pass by. Uh, number three, underwater herbivore, sea, sea cow. Oh, wow. Congratulations, 780. You completed the puzzle in 15 minutes, 22 seconds. Show the puzzle. There it is, folks. We did it. Uh, so let's, I want to see. What, so the trail mix was the backpacker snack, a hint to circled letters. So we have, oh, okay. I always, I always appreciate this. It's clever. So. We have T-A-R-I-L. These are all trail 
the word trail all mixed up, right? All jumbled. So it's a trail mix. Oh, this is uh, so clever. I, I, I'm always impressed by crossword um, uh, makers, right? You know, the, the famous one, uh, Will Short over there at uh, NY, the New York Times. Um, we've done several of his puzzles. His puzzles are always super clever. So there it is. Let me see if we uh, just go over some of the words here that we missed. What's ABA? Oh, the American Board Association. Look intently at his peer. Okay, Mike helped us with idol. Uh, oh, this one here, 54 down with some reddish deer rose. I was thinking does. What's in? Oh, I-N-I-R-I. Uh, -I -I. Michelle helped me with that. Thank you, Michelle. Um, ire. Embitterment is ire. Okay. Did we get all these? Yeah, Lois. Lois, I think it was the Clark. Yeah, Clark's co-worker. Lois Lane, right? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, friends, that's going to be it. I want to thank you all. Let me uh, shut this down. Oops. There we are. Um, yeah, we're all done, folks. I um, really appreciate you hanging out with me today, doing a crossword, opening games, talking about games. Um, tomorrow I will be soloing Tiny Epic, um, Tiny Epic, not Tiny Epic Galaxies, Tiny Epic Dinos. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific over on my Twitch channel. Tiny Epic Dinos was going to solo that. And then hopefully, um, because it's Halloween, Michelle and I may be dressing up. And maybe, hopefully, Lauren might come over. We're going to play play a couple of games tomorrow uh, with everyone on stream. So it's going to be real chill, real relaxed. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So please join us on Twitch, Ruel Gaviola. And um, this has been Rolling with Ruel, nine, our 9 a.m. Friday um, stream. Appreciate you hanging out. Victor, thank you so much, my friend. Good to see you on here as always. And uh, actually, Victor, I'm going to be sending you a message real soon. So um, expect it. Uh, I'll message you here on Facebook. Um, but hey. Until next time, folks, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Go vote and uh, be kind to each other. All right. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.